All right, guys, what's up? Uh, good morning. We're going to do Quintilian, and that's on page 118 of Antiquity Unveiled. Uh, and that's Quintilian, Q-U-I-N-T-I-L-L-I-A-N. And he was a Latin grammarian. All right, and here's his spirit testimony. Uh, my best greeting to you. When here, in mortal life, I was known as Quintilian the Grammarian and lived at Rome from about A.D. 40 to A.D. 90. I was the master and teacher of Pliny the Younger, and it is by his invitation that I am here today. I am glad to bear witness to the truth. I was a teacher at Rome at the time when there was not a single man of any education but that was engaged in making proselytes to some religious views of his own. All of their religious views had a pantheonistic tendency. In fact, pantheonism had set men crazy, each and every one desiring to add another god to his house of idols. In such a state were the religions of my day. In regard to that celebrated personage, whom the Christians claimed once lived in Judea, there was no account of such a personage in my day, nor have I been able to find a single, honest, unbiased spirit in his or her religious views who knows aught of Jesus Christ. Another thing that occurs to me in relation to the story of Jesus, it is my clear and positive conviction that the real Jesus was Apollonius of Tiana. While in mortal life, I saw Apollonius. I was young then, and I heard him speak at Antioch. He preached the very sermon, or nearly so, that it is called Christ's Sermons on the Mount. Being young then, I thought his sermon wonderful, but when I had grown older and had seen other philosophers at Rome, I heard from them just as much truth expressed more clearly and in fewer words than ever fell from the lips of Apollonius. I am also clear in this, that the cross has been the symbol of various countries and religions since the days of Ramesses II of Egypt. There is not a single rite, form of baptism, ceremony, or prayer but what has been stolen almost bodily from China or India, which any traveler in those countries can see for himself. As the ancient philosophers ought only taught as much truth as they could conceive, so you should examine everything submitted to you by the light of reason and analogy. If you do this, no Christian teacher will dare to deny the facts which we spirits are bringing forward. From day to day. These spirit voices will make all false religions bow at the shrine of eternal truth. This will furnish my discourse. All right, and that was Quintilian. Um, we're going to refer to the Encyclopedia Britannica for an account of Quintilian. It was this amiable and accomplished Roman whose spirit returned and through a medium communicated the important facts which we have given. But for that communication we should never have heard of such a person. It would seem from his communication that he was neither born in Spain nor in Rome, as has always been supposed, but in Syria, as he says, that when quite young he, at Antioch, heard Apollonius of Tiana preach, and this before going to Rome, where he heard the transcendent oratory of the Roman philosophers. His mention of the fact that he came at the invitation of his old friend and pupil, Pliny the Younger, very fully accounts for his finding his way to us, Pliny already having communicated several weeks before. If this communication is genuine and to be relied on, then it is very clear that nothing was known of such a historical personage as Jesus Christ or Jesus of Nazareth. As early as the middle of the first century, 
of the so-called Christian era. It is equally clear that although the learned Quintilian has been in spirit life for 1800 years, he has never met a spirit who knew aught of Jesus Christ. His opinion that the real character or hero of the Christian story was Apollonius of Tiana, he having heard that remarkable man preach, is most significant, and his testimony that the Sermon on the Mount is substantially plagiarized from the preaching of Apollonius leaves no reason to believe that there is anything original in the Christian scriptures, especially so far as its ethical and doctrinal features are concerned. It would seem equally clear that the cross, the forms, ceremonies, and church ordinances practiced and revered by Christians are not original, but borrowed from the religions of China and India through Egypt after the reign of Ramesses II, one of the great sovereigns of that country, 1300 BC. Truly, in view of such spirit testimony as this, these spirit voices will make all false religions bow at the, sh at the shrine of eternal truth. Okay, and that was Quintilian, the Latin grammarian, uh, Antiquity Unveiled, and that was page 118 up to 120.